So in this video, we're going to talk about the time ordering operator, which for now might seem random. I know it was for me when I was first reading through these notes. It just seems like it came out of nowhere and I didn't really know why he was talking about this, but it will be important later. So um, basically all it is, is we introduce this operator T and when you act it, for example, on a pair of operators, it just orders them according to basically the time that they act. That's how I, I've been thinking about it. So basically if uh, X naught is greater than Y naught, so if the time of X is later than the time of Y, you put it on the left, otherwise it's the opposite. So basically uh, the way I think of it uh, as if an operator, um, you know, is earlier in time, then you'll operate it with it. You'll operate with it first. So that's why five y is on the right, and then uh, you know five x is on the left in this case, and vice versa here. Um, that kind of makes sense to me. So yeah. Uh, so anyway, what he next does is he defines. Uh, this thing called the Feynman propagator. And it is just going to be this thing. So we evaluated, uh, you know, without the t before, this thing, where we called it d of x minus y. And according to this time ordering thing, if, if x naught is greater than y naught, then it's just, yeah, it, it's just exactly what we had before. So that becomes d of x minus y. And otherwise, it's uh, 5y, 5x, in which case it's d, y minus x. Uh, so, yeah, again, just kind of definitions here don't seem particularly useful yet, but we'll see them come up later. And so then he makes this claim. And again, this is just, this is just some math we're going to go through. Um, so, it's not, I guess the important thing is just knowing these definitions, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how much, how useful all this stuff is later. Uh, so he claims that you can write this expression in terms of this contour integral. So this is an integral over four momenta, and most notably it has two poles because of this denominator here. And he, um, one thing he explicitly says is that in this case, so normally we've been working with our P naught has always been dependent. It, it's not independent of the other components of momentum. It's always been E P. And so, uh, yeah, but in this integral, that we don't have that constraint. So P naught can be anything, and we're just integrating over all, uh, you know, all possible P naughts and P P's. Uh, so to do this, you know, contour integrals, we're gonna use the residue theorem. So basically, if we're gonna do the integral over P naught, then we need to find the residue of this integrand. Uh, so we can do that just if we write this denominator here. If we expand this out, p squared minus m squared, this is p naught squared minus uh, p squared minus m squared, but this is p naught squared minus e p squared, which I can factor like this. So we can see we have two poles, one at e p and one at minus e p. And the key thing is if, so if x naught is greater than y naught, we're going to choose a contour that closes kind of like, yeah, I guess an infinite half circle at the bottom. And um, yeah, and so to evaluate that contour integral, we're just gonna use the residue theorem. So we just calculate the residue uh, at this point. So to do that, we just take our integrand, which I'll just, you know, associate 
I'll associate the I and the two pi to the floor just with the, the other integrals. So the integrand of the P naught integral would just be this thing divided by this. And so to evaluate the residue, we just multiply by this factor here. Uh, it's, it's kind of, you know, hopefully you've seen, it's um, you know, basically just the, the basic example of the residue theorem. It's not a uh, tremendously difficult, you know, complex analysis here. Uh, so you just multiply by this thing and then evaluate at that point, EP. And if you do that, then you will just get this. And then, so the value of the contour integral is just 2 pi i times the sum of the residues. And in this case, it's a minus 2 pi i because the way we've drawn this, it's a clockwise contour. So just get a negative 2 pi i times all of this. And that is how you evaluate the p-naught integral. And so we're just left with the, uh, you know, the, other, the other integrals. And then if you just write everything out, if I combine, so now that I've, I kind of wrote out explicitly, expanded this um, in the exponential here. So, and I, I replaced P naught with EP. And uh, then after I've done that, he kind of recombines it here and writes it like this. So it's kind of a subtle uh, thing. So again, <laughs> Before, when we've written p dot x or whatever, we always, um, it's always understood that p naught is equal to ep. That, that's the on shell condition. So when I write this, it's kind of how we've been writing it before, the, the meaning that we've been writing it before, as opposed to when I wrote that up here where p naught is free to vary, it can be anything. Uh, but the point is, after doing all that, we find that uh, indeed we get d of x minus y, assuming that x naught is greater than y naught, which is important because if we choose, so the whole point of x, choosing x naught minus y naught and choosing the contour that closes in the bottom half plane is our integrand will vanish um, as p naught goes to, uh, for example, minus i infinity so other, otherwise the this uh, term will the, the integral the integrand would blow up and we couldn't use the residue theorem I guess uh, so similarly if we choose if we have y naught greater than x naught then we would choose uh, the contour that closes in the upper plane and it would all work out very similarly and we would get d of y minus x and so that's basically the proof that you can write this expression in terms of this integral. And again, this uh, you know for this contour integral, its its value is basically undefined until you choose the contour. And so that's how you're able to get you know multiple cases based on the contour that you choose. And the last thing is, so he says. Uh, I guess the way they write this a lot is instead of this form, you write it as this. And I guess the advantage of this is that here you can just integrate over the real uh, p-naught axis. As opposed, so when we wrote you know this thing, you kind of have to specify that when you write this, the, the contour along you know the real part is going to be this kind of thing. Uh, whereas here you just you don't have to specify this you just integrate over the real axis but I guess you you still have to choose whether you, or not you close it in the upper half plane or the, the lower half plane um, so yeah and then the last thing is that uh, this Feynman propagator is a Green's function of our Klein-Gordon operator which is I guess interesting. I can't remember if that actually comes into play later, but um, it's I guess an interesting fact. So yeah, that's something.